it's not just the people at the front end, at the sharp end, the people who are doing the work, the pilots, the maintainers, the, the ground crew, et cetera, uh, making mistakes that contribute to, uh, to accidents and incidents. You have to, look pa you have to look back and look at how the system led them uh, to be in that situation in the first place and how the system and the defenses in the system may have prevented an accident from occurring. This can be defined by a number of things, including whatever defenses the company or the organization may have, and it's that margin. It could be defined by procedures, uh, by supervision, by training, uh, by all sorts of things that are trying to keep the organization from exceeding the absolute boundary that leads to an accident or incident. So these are some of the theories uh, that are at play and of course uh, we're now talking about resilience in organizations in terms of their ability to respond to adverse events, uh, prevent them or, or recover from them. So these are all some of the academic, um, I guess, underpinnings of the way that we uh, look at accidents and the way that we look at uh, how you manage safety. You can't just look at any mistakes the individual may have made. It's not that it's not about blaming an individual, it's about looking why what happened happened to them because if it happened to them it can happen to others and if we don't take steps to mitigate that from a systemic perspective then we're not going to improve transportation safety. In order to manage safety effectively you have to do it from a systems perspective and safety management systems have been implemented in Canada in the air, rail and some aspects of the marine industry um, as a more formal documented way of managing the safety of an operation. But when you boil it down to its basic elements, what are we talking about safety management system? Is that, yes, you have regulations that are intended to ensure safety, but regulations can't cover every possible eventuality. And so you need something beyond that. Yes, you have to be compliant with the regulations, but there needs to be something else. The companies need to be able to assess hazards in their operation and manage their associated risks. So safety management systems is a formal documented way of doing that. It consists of a whole bunch of, of elements and but there are three pillars. One is identifying hazards and then assessing the risk of that hazard and then um, mitigating it by procedures, equipment, training, uh, something to, to mitigate the, the, the risk of that hazard creating an accident. So safety management systems are really about documented procedures, formal processes, but it's also about having the right mindset, which is commitment, cognizance, competence within the company um, to, uh, to manage safety uh, proactively and reactively. What we tried to do with this is issue kind of a warning, is that safety management systems, while we believe they're a good approach to managing safety, um, it only works if the companies have the ability to proactively identify safety deficiencies, the capability to rectify them, and the commitment to do so. And so you need culture and process together in order to effectively manage the safety. A whole bunch of processes and procedures that sit on manuals on shelves, that's not an SMS if it doesn't have the required company commitment and buy into using it, but just wanting to be safe isn't enough either. You do need uh, formal processes. And in addition, you need balanced regulatory oversight uh, from the regulator.